Hello and welcome. In this interactive lecture I will show you how to use the rock curve and how the rock curve is created based on the confusion matrix. So please go to the site gornikdata.com. Here you find in the header the interactive dashboards. Please click on it. And here you can see the receiver operating characteristics curve. Please click on the image. And the article is loading and you can see the interactive dashboard is embedded. The underlying task is to create a model for a binary classifier. Here we have two classes, 0 and 1. At the right side you see the model predictions as the vertical axis and the actual values as the horizontal axis. This classifier provides predictions, which range from 0 to 1. It depends on a threshold to assign specific values to the groups. The groups are false positive, true negative, true positive and false negative. Points that are actual zero and below the threshold are assigned to Tn. Above the threshold they are assigned to Fp. Points that are actual one and below the threshold are assigned to false negatives, Fn, and the ones above the threshold are assigned to the true positives, Tp. You can see here we are starting with a very low threshold. In this example it's 0.1. You can see that there is a large group of Fp and Tp. If we increase the threshold, we assign more points to true negative and false negative. The count of points for Fp and Tp is reduced accordingly. At the left side you can see the confusion matrix, which is directly a result of this visualization. The values correspond to the count of points in these four areas. You can also see the accuracy as one main performance metric. By changing the threshold, you change the point assignments, which directly impacts the confusion matrix, and finally the performance metric, which relies on the confusion matrix. In the below graph, you see the rock curve. True positive ratio is plotted versus false positive ratio. By changing the threshold, the model is changed. The red dot corresponds to the current model. Let's see, we are changing the threshold and you can see the red dot is moving to different points. There are as many model results as there are thresholds. For each threshold a different model result is created. What happens if you run this algorithm for a complete range of threshold from 0 to 1? Right you get the receiver operating characteristics curve. You can see it if you click on the show overall rock curve checkbox. The shape of the curve depends on the algorithm and the corresponding parameters of the algorithm. If now a different model would be fitted, you could compare both and see if one is generally performing better than the other. Here only one curve is shown. Why do we need cost parameters that you can see below here? Think back to the lecture when we spoke about type 1 and type 2 errors. The main idea here was that certain errors are more costly than the others. For example, a false warning of an earthquake might be an annoyance, but not predicting the earthquake would result in huge costs. In cases like this, when you have errors that are not equally critical, it is useful to incorporate the different costs in your model. I did this in this plot. Now the colors of the second plot become important. They represent a cost value. You can see their explanation in the legend at the right side. What you want to find is the minimum cost of a model. In our case, 
The purple colors represent the lowest cost values and the black points represent the model with the minimum cost. If we increase our false negative cost parameter and make it 10 times more costly than false positive costs, let's do this. This is equal to our earthquake example in which we want to ensure that missing an actual earthquake is much more costly than a false warning. The minimum cost model changes to high values of false positive ratio and true positive ratio. You can see the black dot here. Contrary, if we make false positives 10 times more costly than false negatives, let's do this, set false negatives to 1, false positive cost to 10, the minimum cost model is found at low false positive ratio and low true positive ratio. Let's wrap up what we covered. In this interactive lecture you learned how the threshold influences the confusion matrix and performance matrix. You learned that the rock curve is a combination of a complete range of thresholds. Finally, you learned how treating false negative and false positive costs differently affects the model selection. That's it for this interactive lecture. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.